Hello, my name is Kevin from Moonlight Mantid. Surprise! We're doing another Q&A. Uh, this will be Q&A number six. Um, the reason we just did two in a row is because you left so many awesome questions and I'm going to go ahead and answer all of them. And then I just did a art contest winner. Please, if you want to win, uh, make sure you um, send me your art. Go ahead and uh, visit uh, www.moonlightmantids.com for information on how to enter. And then uh, send me your art. Maybe you could win. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome free praying mantises and stuff you need for it. So you don't need anything, you know, just, you know, send me your art. And uh, don't send me pictures of your art, because that's not going to work. Um, so I got uh, number six. Um, um, these are uh, YouTube con comments, and uh, we're just going to go through the list real quick and answer some for you, and hopefully we learn together as a community, and we make good conscious decisions about praying mantids. I slur a lot, yet there's a lot of stuff in my face, all right? Just stop bringing it up on YouTube like you do, and I'm going to read those also, Mr. People on the, on the YouTube board that are mean and like to talk about all the jewelry in my face and all that, and uh, we're going to address that here in a moment, so that way you can get attacked on YouTube. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to condone that, but if you do, that's fine. I just, maybe you can win too. Um, anyway, so uh, we had uh, Shanna FH, who uh, leaves a lot of comments and uh, questions that are actually pretty decent. Hey, my Uth just hatched. I have eight nymphs L1 right now, and I have no idea what to feed. Um, make sure you eat uh, feed fruit flies. Uh, she says, I fed some ants, and the results were bad, very bad. The ants attacked my nymph. Um... So, just so you know, I mean, that was more of a comment, because I think we've already told you what to feed, because you don't have, oh yeah, you don't have flies in your country, okay. Um, we talked about that, uh, you springtails and um, small, small crickets and mealworms, and then maybe try to get some uh, natural, out, you know, you know, get, uh, encourage natural, naturally occurring fruit flies to, uh, to, um, Maybe in a, like a container or bucket with like peaches. I always find that if you leave peaches out, they get fruit flies all over them. So put some in a jar, leave the jar open, put it outside in the sun somewhere, and you'll get fruit flies, and that's what you can feed. And yeah, she just said, I tried to feed some ants. I've always wondered that. Like, what if I put an ant in here? I'm like, nah, ants are going to tear it apart. Yeah, it happened to you. You did it. Awesome. Congratulations. Now we know. Um, thank you again. Your questions are awesome. Uh, next one, Emily Ray. What if the mantis malts on a stick for laying the eggs. Um, if they malt on that stick, and that stick was for laying eggs, I guess you get another stick. That would be my advice. Unless I'm reading this wrong. In plain English? No, I don't think so. All right, uh, Rella Zella, YouTube name. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, after the nymphs hatch, how long can they be together in the same cage until I need to separate them so they don't eat each other? Um, actually, as L1s, they seem to do that a lot less, although I have seen mantis that hatched uh, six hours before had dried and then started eating the, the little, um, the little worm-like larvae coming out, eating them as they were coming out. So, they will eat each other. I mean, depends what you want. You want every last one to live? Get them out of there. Um, don't leave them together too long. If you have 300 and you don't care, you can put them together like some people in cages of two or three or up to 12, as I see some people do. That's not my advice. I wouldn't do that. I separate each and every one of them because I don't like to see them eating each other because I guess I'm, I just don't like it, I guess. And you do what you want. It depends what your purposes are. What are you, what are you going to do with it, you know? Save every single one. I've had some people drive themselves insane because they will not let a single Chinese die when they hatch it. They'll keep all three, four hundred alive, desperate, like they're going to, they're calling off days of work because they're trying to get this, trying to feed every last one of these. Don't drive yourself crazy. Just call what you don't need. Separate them if you want them and need them. Um, need them, keyword. And then, um, yeah, I would say after about 12 hours, you can separate and feed them, stop them from eating each other. But you can put a few of them together. Usually as L1s, it's not a big deal. As L2s, they're a bit more aggressive. So very latest, you want to wait till L1 stage is over or right before they go into L2 or L2 after. It depends on your needs. So I just, I really don't know how to answer that perfectly. Um, wow. Herp Flurkenselermenkinson. Arlermenadsido. I'm going to show you because this is insane right here. Right there. Look at look at that word. That's a YouTube name. Look at all that. I don't know what that says. I'm not going to read that. Just whatever. Herp, 15 digits, two words. 
Um, all right, here we go. Uh, or 15 letters into one word, whatever that says. I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't have time. Uh, I currently have two-inch Griffin Mantids that absolutely hates handling. Whenever I open the vivarium, it jumps out, very skittish. And uh, when I lay my, when it lays out on my hand, um, do you have any advice to help me out for handling mantids? Um, Two-inch Griffin, that's got to be like an L3 or L4. Um, keep raising it. And as they get bigger, they seem to become more docile, less scared of you eating them or something. So that's you. that usually helps out a lot because um, when they're young, they seem to run really fast and scurry. This is a young one. Um, as they get bigger, they be, seem to become more docile. So really great question. Yeah, some of them just, they seem to just scurry, just run. Because they're small still and they don't, you know, they don't, I guess they haven't got that complex yet of, oh, I'm a predator and I'm big and I eat everything, you know, and probably, you know. It's uh, it, it could have something to do with its size. Um, they they will slow down when they're bigger, and you know then they're more handleable. You definitely don't want to be handling nymphs that are too tiny, um, no matter how cute they are, because one little jump onto your carpet, and then they're gone, and then you're not gonna find it, and just so just leave them alone for a few sheds, uh, and then uh, just handle them, and you know then they just seem to not care anymore. I'm not saying they get tame because it's an insect. I don't know what it's thinking, and I wouldn't pretend to know. Oh, they become more docile as you handle them. I, I don't know. I don't know. They just they get larger, they get slower, That's and then you can handle them better. That's what I know. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, this person said, my mantis just laid an ooth today. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's fertilized or not. Um, how do I know if it's fertile? Um if you if it, if you raised in captivity and it wasn't mated and it's not an parthenogenic species that you've bred, then it's not fertile. But they will lay lots of ooth. They're just not going to hatch. Um, if you have parthenogenic species and you did any research at all, you would know immediately, like the Brunner mantis and all them, that yes, they um, they are parthenogenic and when they lay ooth, they they hatch. Um, unless you got this a wild caught female that was an adult, meaning it had its wings or wing butts. And uh, that usually tells you that, um, you know, if, if it was out in the wild and it was female and laid ooth, it's probably probably fertile because they, the females get bred really, really, really quickly after adulthood. Um, usually they're already males ready before the females that start flying all around and waiting for them and they pick up those pheromones. Within a few nights, I think, I think is all it would take. So um, anytime in September, like we do out here, you find a female outside, it's probably going to be fertile. You raise in captivity, it's never seen a male, it's not partho. It's not going to hatch. It's not going to happen. Um, if it does happen, then you need to contact somebody and let it, let them know that um, you know the Virgin Mary praying mantis status ju just became just went into existence, and we need to go worship or something. Um, but I don't know. Hazard says, uh, at what size uh, what size cage is perfect for the praying mantis? That depends on the praying mantis. Um, not a, I wouldn't suggest a 20 gallon for an L1 of any species because you're probably not going to find it once you put it in there. Um, but I would say that to start with small deli containers and work your way up. And when they're adults, you can pretty much put them in anything. They're just going to wander around. That'll be fine. Um, you want to give them uh, the rule of thumb. Here we go. This is good. Um, get, uh, for adults is give them twice their own body length in every direction. So if you got about a... A five or six inch mantis, you want to give it about a five, you know, you want to give it about a foot in each direction. One foot solid cube. You can get those cloth cube things from my website, www.moonlightmantids.com. Yes, I'm selling myself. You can get go on eBay and buy those lovely cubes. Um, those are great for adult mantids. Um, some of the smaller species are fine, but um, if you have lots and lots and lots of them, you're probably not going to have a cube for each one, maybe just a large jar or something. Um, you'll know if it's right, I hope. Um, and I just, I don't know, I can't really, you know, speak for everyone. Um, it just depends on your means, um, but you can cheaply find, uh, Tupperwares and things like that. And we went over this a lot, um, just so you know. Oh, shit, there's, uh, there's some, like, I, I got these weird, weird, I, this is just the weirdest thing, I swear to God I'm not making this up. A large parasitic animal just jumped onto my desk, and it just is, it, there, there's so many of these things hopping around here. And I think I just I have some kind of some kind of infestation. So I'm gonna show you real quick. Tell me if you have this problem, if you're a mantis breeder or an insect breeder, you have a lot of these damn things and they're everywhere and they're freaking me out and they're really gross and they're huge and nasty and it's they're like rats. They're just infesting my home and I'm sick of this. And there it is. I'm holding it. They seem to be uh 
fairly ravenous creatures. Really big, big thing there. See that? Hello. I, I'm a pest, some kind of a pest. You know, you think insects are not pests, and therefore this strange creature is, is a pest. It's, that's what things are like out here. Anyway, so if you know what this is, please comment. Whatever this thing is. Whatever it is. Alright, I'm going to just swap that real quick. Alright, now that's done. i got to keep smacking them. Um, oh, anyway, back to uh, drakes and dragons. Could you uh, periodically feed honey to them with their food to prevent gut rot or black death? Good question. We don't do, we haven't had time to do a lot of videos on like health and injuries because I don't, I'm afraid to make a video about that stuff because I don't know what is 100% correct and I don't want you taking my advice 100% and then maybe it's faulty and then your, your animal dies or whatever. Um, feeding honey is commonly a, a common technique used to cure black death for whatever reason. Um, it seems to work. Um, you can give them some honey uh, regularly if you want to with their food, and will it help prevent it? I'm guessing, I guess it could. Um, animals that I've, I maybe have treated with it um, don't seem to get black death that I've noticed. Um, so feeding honey to mantids is another trick, by the way. They like it as a treat. And um, it's, uh, it, if you know, if you want to use it preventatively, it can only help the mantis because I know that it's it seems to be healthy for them, and they do enjoy eating honey. So I would keep giving them to them. Um, good question, though. I think, yes, maybe it could help. Um, it's not definitely not going to hurt. Um, next set of questions here. Uh, Mr. Easy E, uh, hi. My two praying mantises are L3 uh, um, and malting. Um, I'm pretty sure... That is a common Chinese mantis, but I'm unsure as to how often they eat. So I can say one of them has had one cricket each for three days in a row since I've had them. Um, so you're feeding them a lot of crickets. Uh, they seem to be Chinese. You got two of them, and they're molting. That's great. Um, if they like them, uh, go ahead and feed them that. Uh, if you send a picture, I can help identify them. Um, I wouldn't feed solely crickets because it seems that sometimes they cause issues and some people swear by it by not feeding crickets that uh, it's a bad idea and don't do it and uh, um, but uh, I don't seem to have a problem when I mix things up so I would try to supplement with something like mealworms or um, blue bottle fly or something like that even stuff you can find outside as long as it's not like an ant or something like we had this past person not gonna look for your name um, tell us that it went didn't go down so well and I, I believe you um, but yeah, just uh, try to supplement when you're feeding only crickets. It seems to help. Um, otherwise, uh, that's good. How many? How much should I feed them? As much as they'll eat. Uh, the rate you're going, it seems like it, you know it's if, and they're malting. So I would keep feeding them that. As they get bigger, feed them more. It uh, seems like you're doing a good job. Uh, Bobby Buck, what do you feed them apart from roaches? I feed everything and anything I have at the time. I usually have a lot of different feeders, so I have like crickets, I have um, blue bottle fly mostly, blow flies, which are like blue bottle flies, no distinction between them, um, not even in size. Um, I feed uh, mealworms, superworms, roaches, you don't like roaches, that's why you told me you don't want to feed roaches. Um, everything and anything else it can catch, if it can grab it and eat it, that's what you can feed it. That kind of rhymed, that's kind of cool. Um, so, you know, crickets and mealworms. And if you don't want to feed roaches, I guess that's fine too. Blue bottle fly, uh, flying insects seem to be the very best food for mantids, by the way. So blue bottle fly, I'm going to say, is probably your, your number one bet. And I think most people would agree. Cynthia Rodriguez, for Moonlight Mantids, I have a question. Uh, for the art contest, can I draw anything or other than a mantis? I would like a mantis if I win, but I'd like to draw something other than that. Um, I guess if you did, like, reptile pictures or picture your dog, I mean, if it was, like, really beautiful, I guess I would send you something. Um, it's really up to you. I, it's an art contest, and if you just don't want to draw a mantis and you draw me whatever it is you draw, and it seems to be really great, then I don't care. I mean, send it, and uh, if you, it's a conceited effort, I will definitely still send you a mantis. Um, if maybe you're talented drawing only, like, shapes, you know, <laughs> then I will consider it depending on what comes in that month. So, you know, give me a, a good effort, and I don't really care what you draw or paint or sculpt. I had little clay figurines once. That person won. Um, anyway, um, so I got some unrelated questions here. 
um, about my piercings that I get from time to time. Um, let's see. I wonder if he... This is a Taylor Wolf, so you can spam Taylor Wolf on, on YouTube. Uh, I wonder if he drinks through a straw or just lets drinks trickle down his lower face holes. <laughs> I, I'm laughing, so you can laugh. It's okay. My lower face holes. I guess, yes, my lower face holes do trickle sometimes. Not when I'm, like, drinking or whatever. I have to take them out, and then I can kind of, like, squirt water. It's really gross. Maybe comment if you want me to do that one time, and maybe I'll consider it. Usually I only do that at the bar, um, and it's usually pretty funny or, and gross. But um, uh, another one said, uh, Level 2 Gnome said, Your piercings are so 1970s. Actually, they're 2006. Uh, that's what they're like, because that's when I got them. I got majority of these, like 90% 2006. I haven't got many more, mostly because um, I don't have a lot of room on my face. See, there's five, one, two, three, four, five. There's a bolt in my tongue, and the reason, kids, that I got a bolt in my tongue, I did not pierce myself. I said a swear once, and my mother put that bolt right in my tongue, so don't do it. Don't swear. Or your mom will put a bolt in your tongue. I don't think she won't. I know your mom. And uh, and then I got like two here and two here. Um, which I guess I could show you right there. Right there. A little there. Right here. There's my swear. My swear bolt. Um, that my mother gave me. And I've had them, yes, for about ten years. They don't leak unless... I force water through them, which is gross, and you don't need to know, but something. I guess this has just become about me, not praying mantids anymore, about how I'm like some kind of a freak. And then uh, I got another comment here, too. It says, that this guy looks like he got in a fight with a nail gun. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, so I thought I'd read some of these. Um, yeah, it's hilarious. You like to make fun of my piercings. Um, I don't care. I can laugh about it. You can laugh about it. It's okay. Uh, I know it's not, I like things that are different, that's why I breed mantids, and that's why I have a whole bunch of piercings. Um, I think, I guess if I had to say anything about them, um, I guess, uh, so I'll tell you the story, I might as well just tell you. Um, so my dad's a military guy, and uh, so he's been in the army like 23 years, he's retired now, and uh, so he was, uh, and he's a little old fashioned. I said one time, I think I was in middle school, I said, hey dad, can I pierce my ear? And he's like, uh, yes, but if you do, you got to get a dress and a purse to match. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to do that. So he went away to Afghanistan or Iraq or, and, uh, and fought, which he actually did twice. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, so while he was gone, I started piercing my face. He's, you know, he, he didn't say anything about my face. He said not my ear or I had to get an ear, a uh, dress and a purse. But uh, so I started piercing my face. And then when he got home, he didn't say anything about it. He actually, to this day, has not said anything about it. Because I'm a huge smartass. And I usually am, I like to do the things I'm not supposed to do. Um, you know, I'm sort of a, you know, a goober that way. I just kind of, I like things that are different and odd. And uh, I guess uh, I just, you do something long enough. And it's like like wearing back, you know, my hats. I always wear a hat. And, um... I, you do something so long, it becomes a habit, like keeping mantids. I'll probably, I don't know in the future, you know, I might lose both my hands, and I wouldn't keep mantids then because they'd crawl all over me. It'd be a headache, you know. I can't say I'll have them forever, but I do remember him telling my mom that it was a phase. So here we are 10 years later, and here we are with mantids and reptiles, which I've kept for, not the mantids. I've had mantids growing up, but I didn't start breeding until about four years ago, five years ago. But, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's kind of who you are, you know, it doesn't make me who I am or anything like that. I'm not delusional, but, um, you know, you just, uh, you, you know, you just be who you are and that's the most important thing and everyone will agree. You do what you like, you be who you are, you know, you don't have to defend why you keep insects or have piercings or a backwards hat or a certain, you know, always black clothing. That's up to you. You do what you want, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt you or anyone else. Uh, the piercings hurt, but only for a little while. So that is kind of... I got to get off YouTube. Um, I got to stop doing this. Oh, by the way, I didn't really hurt the frog. She's fine. She's right here. Hi, I'm a frog. All right, I got to go and feed this thing before it bites me again. Stay down. Stay down. I'm not giving you good advice. I got to go. Bye.